first time in World Series history, we are playing the semifinals on a Monday as both if necessary games are necessary. Four-time national champion Oklahoma and World Series newcomers JMU for a spot in the finals. When I was a young girl, they said an entire show on a national stage with women in starring roles could never happen. How thrilling that today you are proving them wrong. I'm a one woman show and a perfect present for Montana folks. And here we are, all eyes on you. Coming to the plate, and she got her. Hungry for a championship. Mackenzie Donahue, gone. Enjoy this dance with all your heart. The freshman May gets her swinging. It's gone. Danny Morgan is not done yet. This is your moment. Go for it. In a must win, they do win. Welcome to the NCAA Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. Gorgeous afternoon for our semifinal doubleheader. The winners will move on to the Champ Series beginning tomorrow night. We open with James Madison, Oklahoma, followed by Alabama and FSU. This will be the third meeting of the series for JMU and Oklahoma. The Dukes shocked the softball world on Thursday. Kate Gordon, the extra innings, home run, backed up by Odyssey Alexander in the circle, and they stunned the top seed. But the Sooners got him in the rematch yesterday, led by Tiari Jennings. She went yard, so did Kinsey Hansen in a 6-3 win to set up our rubber match today for a spot in the finals. And we welcome you to Oklahoma City. I'm Beth Mowens with our Hall of Fame booth. Got Michelle Smith, Jessica Mendoza, Holly Rowe will be with us throughout the day as well. We start out with this Oklahoma Sooner lineup claiming to be one of the best ever and trying to back that up with a national championship led by the national player of the year jocelyn allo and a lineup that is strong from one to nine but i think about 20 years of the national player of the year award there have only been four that have been non-pitchers they have to make a statement they have to be great and that is jocelyn allo not only has she hit 31 home runs this season which is an all-time oklahoma record for a single season she puts her as a career at 85 that's just 10 shots of the all-time record of 95 held by Lauren Chamberlain. Their entire offense, though, Beth, yes, the home runs, the slugging percentage, but it's also the batting average as a team. Look at that, all those firsts, but they hit over 400 through their lineup. They get it done. There are no weak leaks. And the toughest time they have had all year, well, it's been against Odyssey Alexander, held them to a season high, a season low in runs on Thursday, a season high strikeouts. Much bigger stage with a lot on the line today, Michelle. Absolutely, and Alexander's odyssey of a postseason continues. She has been dominating in the circle against this very, very good Oklahoma offense 63 strikeouts and 60 innings pitched it's a rise ball at the top of the zone that's explosive but her ability to mix speeds is really what sets her apart she has just been a juggernaut for this jmu team both offensively and defensively in the circle we are ready to go oklahoma's championship mindset envisioning a fifth national title with an eye on the ultimate prize the tag of best team ever no unseated club has ever reached the finals. JMU can do it today. History in the making. A championship ticket for the taking. Let's take a look at our Capital One starting lineups for the unseated JMU Dukes at 41 and three on the season. Really strong on top with Gordon Jubas and Alexander leading the way. Look at Sarah's numbers. A couple of home runs has driven in six here at the Women's College World Series. Wins over Oklahoma and Oklahoma State and then the loss to OU. Let's send it down to Holly Rowe. Well, JMU pitcher Odyssey Alexander has been on the journey of a lifetime and she credits the village that got her here. You've seen her get emotional about Pops. That is her grandfather, Washington Alexander, who primarily raised her. 
She said, I wouldn't be here without him. And he is ill, he is not able to travel, and her heart has been with him in every pitch. She learned how to pitch by watching YouTube videos. She's a self-taught pitcher, grew up pitching against a water well in her backyard with spray-painted spots. But I can tell you this, when she hits those spots and when she pitches with the passion that she has, the world has been captivated. Odyssey Alexander, her heart is with her grandfather at home, but her soul and her passion is right here in the circle, leading JMU to unprecedented heights. And Holly, uh, for most of this season, she's been hitting those three spots on the edge, not leaving many over the middle. For the third time, the Sooners and the Dukes yeah, the winner today into the championship series. And the leadoff swing is gone. Kate Gordon, home run, JMU. Her third of the World Series, and she cranked it. Kate Gordon has been money for JMU. She takes a pitch, a curveball on the inside corner and just goes yard on the very first pitch. And if you look at her situationals, she has been outstanding. This whole club against lefties can hit the ball. Driving that out of the yard, Jess. Talk about make a statement. First pitch. Ooh, message sent. And now Juarez will have to settle down, appearing in her third Women's College World Series, her second with Oklahoma, one with Arizona State before she transferred in. 20 and one on the season, including a couple of wins here in Oklahoma City, throwing some of her best stuff of the year. And Gordon strikes quickly. And now it's Jubis who also has a couple of home runs here at Hall of Fame Stadium from McDonald, PA. Woo. We are playing this game today because of weather delays the last couple of days. This is usually a game that would have been played last night, so all four teams playing today getting a bit more rest and JMU ready to go. Two and two. Winners of the Colonial Athletic Association during the regular season. Only really had one loss. Jubis pops it up. Kinsey Hanson calling for it and she makes the catch. One down. Well, G. Warriors can move the ball through the zone. It's a curve ball that she will throw inside to lefties, a backdoor curve. But look at the way she has swing and miss potential. Rise ball at the top of the zone, just really good movement out of that lefty arm. She'll put it on the corner and let it run. She mixes speeds, but the one area that she has to tighten up, home runs. That was her 19th Ooh. home run she's given up this year. And just over 100 innings of work. Here is the pitcher, Odyssey Alexander. Odyssey at the plate, two for nine here at the World Series. Their road to get here included upsets of seeded teams, Tennessee, Missouri, and then here, a couple more seeds, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. One loss in the Supers, one more loss yesterday. Woo! Remember, this is a right-handed heavy James Madison lineup. They only have one left-handed bat batter in the entire lineup. So all these righties going against the left-handed, Giselle Juarez. And the approach is she likes to get inside. And a strikeout for G, two down. Now comes with the rise ball up and out of the zone. She had been coming inside with the curveball, and you see the spin there. It starts in the strike zone, ends up way above. And a base 
Sid right back up the middle for Logan Newton. Her fourth hit of this World Series hit a two-out base runner. Madison Niokas, the second baseman, had a couple of hits in the loss yesterday and a stolen base. Lindsey Elam, by the way, is the catcher today. And that means that Kinsey Hansen will move over and play first base. Defensive change sooner fans are familiar with. That catches the corner 0-2. JMU aggressive, first pitch swinging. Struck her out. Couple of Ks, but the big blast from Kate Gordon gets JMU the lead. Just 24 hours to sleep on it. Kate Gordon, first pitch, the approach. Look for something in, send it out. One zip, JMU. Here's our Capital One starting lineup for the top seed in the tournament, the Oklahoma Sooners. They get after you right away. T.R.A. Jennings, look at the numbers in the two games against Alexander this week. Batting 500, couple of home runs, has driven in five. She is the table setter with Jocelyn Allo, the National Player of the Year, coming in right behind her. So they have seen this lineup uh, over 200 pitches from Odyssey already in the couple of games. Not, not that it's taxing on her, but they have gotten a good look. And one of the most daunting lineups in the country against Alexander at 18 and two. Well, what she's known for is the rise ball. And she'll hit this in the low 70s, up and out of the zone. But what she's gonna need today against Oklahoma is this beautiful off speed, 54 miles an hour. You see the rotation, hard to pick up out of the hand. That's how she's gotten a ton of swing and miss. She can mix those speeds, elevate out of the zone, but it'll be the off speed today, Smitty. It'll be key against these OU big bats. She's thrown every pitch here at the World Series. 22 innings of work. And here is Jennings. Can she match what Kate Gordon did on the very first pitch of the game? Sent it out in the early 1-0 lead. Those numbers, by the way, one of the best freshman seasons in the history of the game. She uh, led the nation in runs batted in. Top two in the country in batting average and home runs as well. And she had a leadoff home run off of Alexander yesterday. She has a lot of opposite field power and she can hit anything. She'll even take inside pitches, drive it to right center. But if you leave anything middle away, she will absolutely hammer you. The thing I'm so impressed with, the 92 RBIs as the leadoff hitter. That just shows how <laughs> strong the lineup is for Oklahoma. That means seven, eight, nine are getting on, so she and the leadoff can bash them in. Two one from Odyssey. Out into shallow left and back to make the play is Jubis, one down. And here comes Jocelyn Allo. Four home runs in the NCAA tournament, one here in the series. One for five against Alexander with three walks. Goes the opposite way. Newton back on the track. It will stay in the yard. Two down. Just missed it, too. This pitch was up and out. She just kind of throws her hands at it. Hits it to the warning track, Smitty. That's, that's called power. <laughs> and this is a miss hit. And she almost hits it out. See the power.
power. Such a simple swing, too, because she is so strong with her lower half. Just the way she uncoils, right? Just like a spring. Here's Kinsey Hansen. Woo! Homered in the win for Oklahoma yesterday. Has a couple of them here at Hall of Fame Stadium. From Norco, California. Also hit a home run on Saturday against Georgia as the top seed had to come out of the loser's bracket. And after JMU beat them on Thursday, here's her home run swing from yesterday. This is the difference maker in the game. Already up a few runs, but this was the hammer late in game against Odyssey Alexander. Well, immediately after Alexander threw that rise ball, she knew it was going out of the yard. I'd like to see her take a little bit off of that rise ball, work more on movement than on the speed of the pitch, because it's the movement that's going to fool them and induce a pop-up versus a ball that leaves the yard. Odyssey wanted that last call, clearly trying to get in on the hands of Kinsey Hansen. Second time they've tried to come in there. In the dirt, three and one. Dukes have knocked down the door a couple of times, reaching the Supers. Uh, never to the World Series. All American pitchers, Jalen Ford, Megan Good, a former teammate that Odyssey watched her preparation. And has taken over the top spot this year and the walk to Hanson. One out base runner. And this was a move that Patty Gasso made pregame, bringing Nicole Mendez up from the nine spot to bat fourth, hitting 300 at the World Series. Patty Gasso, the last decade for the Sooners, nine World Series, five trips to the finals, three national championships. Mendez, a part of the last one in 2017. Has a hit and has driven in a run off of Alexander. Mendez. Fly ball out to left center. Michelle Sullivan under it. Side is retired. One complete and a 1-0 JMU lead. The NCAA Women's College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Dos Equis. Get a dose. Please enjoy responsibly. We love you. We love you, We CC. love you, CC, and congratulations to you and the Dukes. And we are so proud of you all. Go! Come on. Go, Go Dukes. Dukes! Go Dukes! <laughs> her grandparents who raised her are not able to be here, but it has been so incredible. Other members of her family are here. About nine or ten people have come from all around the country to support her aunts, uncles, cousins. Um, but the really cool thing is when people heard Grandpa couldn't get here, they were all saying, Look, we'll donate, we'll bring him, whatever we can do. Unfortunately, he can't travel, but I just love that the whole nation is so wrapped up in this story and making sure that Odyssey has her heart with her. I know they're watching and, and just know how proud she is that all of you have gotten her to this point. Thank you, Holly. at second base by Tiara Jennings to retire Lindsay Meeks here in the top of the second. Six, seven, and eight coming up. Lauren Laporte, the three-time coach of the year in the CAA, getting the Dukes into the national semifinals. It's the first time in history an unseeded team has ever been this far. And they are 
looking to become the first mid-major to reach the finals in 27 years since Cal State Northridge lost to Arizona in 1994. A lot of the underdogs, a lot of the smaller schools pulling for the Dukes against the top seed in the tournament and the four-time national champions. Allie Hall is the designated player. Lauren and her staff, Jennifer Herzig, Libby Morris. She was an assistant at Radford for Mickey Dean, then came to, with him to JMU, and then Mickey got offered a job in the SEC, so Laporte stepped up. Fabulous shortstop back in her day at Roanoke College. I remember talking to Laporte when uh, she first got the job, asking her to come down and be a part of uh, my charity tournament, which turned into the ESPN Clearwater event. And she just uh, so excited to, to be the coach and lead this program. Strikeout number three, another rise from G. Juarez, two down. Juarez throws that rise ball at the top of the zone, but it also has some up and in. She throws that very efficiently, locates it well. A little bit of off speed. You can yeah. see JMU well out in front of it. Another first pitch swinging, and the knuckleball will take it into foul territory off the bat of Lauren Burnett. It's clearly the plan for James Madison against G. Juarez. All but one batter has swung at the first pitch because, as you saw with the strikeout to Hall, once she gets ahead, she likes to get you to chase, get out of the zone, but the best pitches you'll see from her will be early. That's why JMU swinging early. Be interesting to see how that impacts the uh, pitch calling from veteran Jen Rocha over there in the dugout. Saw her having a lengthy conversation with Juarez in between innings after the uh, home run ball in the first. Working on their strategy. She has responded nicely. Her fourth strikeout. She gets ahead early and then gets you to chase. This one up and away for the miss. Oklahoma picks up the bats. Well, hello there, Mackenzie Donahue, a breakout star here at the Women's College World Series. That lady's sister has knocked three of them out of the park and has worked her way up the order now into the sixth position. And she is due up second behind Grace Lyons here in the bottom of the second. Mustang, Oklahoma, the latest in a long line of Patty Gasso gems that she discovers around her home state and sprinkles them in with the Texans and the Californians. And the Oklahomans always seem to have a big impact. In the days of Ashley Barrett and Jennifer Stewart, uh, Kelsey Arnold and Kaylee Clifton. Just outside the line. Dan Garrick. Making a move. Scott Tomlinson, Jim Bertuzzi, Leah Bowen are umpires. Oh, nutmegged. <laughs> Lions, the uh, shortstop and the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. We'll hop her right back to Odyssey Alexander, one down. Kinsey Donahue taking a pitch on the inside corner and driving it out. It's the excitement, it's the love, it's being in the lineup, knowing immediately off the bat it's going yard. She had a career day. Saturday was Mackenzie Donahue day. I mean, the three home runs, yes, the five RBI. She had never had a multi-home run game in her career. <laughs> feel bad for that home plate, the way she poof, stumps it. We love Rachel Garcia, fabulous career at UCLA. Looking forward to watching her in the Olympics. 
But Ghana, who got her twice? I mean, she'll be telling that story the rest of her life. <laughs> and their big win over UCLA. Five foot three. Slices that one to the right side. Back on the grass goes Niokas, two down. After they lost to JMU on Thursday, they got mad. They run ruled Georgia. They scored 10 on UCLA and then they beat JMU yesterday. So their last three games in uh, just over a day and a half, putting up 24 runs. And they are inching closer and closer to that season home run record of 158. They have 154 on the season. Lindsay Elam has three of those home runs in the NCAA tournament. Into foul territory. Terrific crowd on hand. It's bonus softball. Good news on a Monday, right? The beautiful new upper deck here at Hall of Fame Stadium. Weren't supposed to be playing games this afternoon. Supposed to be game one of the champ series, but instead the semis moved on to Monday for our doubleheader. Coming up next, it's Alabama and Florida State. Champ series tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. We'll start our best two of three. Who knows, we last year we have this many days. Could start expanding more days here on out. We'll see. Sounds like that is the conversation to make sure that uh, the student athletes are well rested and can avoid some of the late night, early morning games uh, due to weather and extra innings and such. Well, this game would have been played after nine o'clock last night and yeah. said they're refreshed, the product on the field that you get. And Holly Rose talked so much about the story of Odyssey Alexander. This won't be the second game in the same day for her. Yeah. <laughs> Outside to Elam, full count. And she draws the walk. Send it down to Holly Rowe. We you talk about Odyssey, Alexander has pitched so much, over 300 pitches so far in this Women's College World Series, but she's also battling through a little bit of an injury on her foot. Uh, you could see it start to bother her in her pitching game yesterday. I talked to her in the cage on my way onto the field today, and she's missing some toenails. She took a hard hit to the foot, broke off some of her toenails, and just imagine trying to drag your foot and plant on that foot with your toenails missing. She's really fighting through a lot here today. Her spot in the finals, and she induces the fly ball. Sullivan, too complete. She has kept the Sooners off the board. A rematch after Florida State beat Alabama, shut them out 2 0 yesterday. And uh, both of our games today, the winner moving on to the championship series. Oh, we've had our share of popcorn already. Usually not pregame, though. That's something that uh, as broadcasters yeah, can be tough to deal with. Michelle Sullivan, the junior from Ashburn, Virginia, will step in here. Has already been called upon to make a couple of plays out in center. Nine, and then the top of the order. And the Ooh. home run hitter, Kate Gordon, on deck. Her first swing of the game is the difference in the game. Just all the warm up and the prep, and you get in. Not even five seconds into the game. Long ball. Ball up. 
since the home run. One hit, and uh, Juarez has settled down nicely. She struck out four. Series continues with our champ finals. Bumped back to Tuesday night. We'll see you tomorrow, 7 Eastern on ESPN. For more information, the Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. So 7 o'clock Eastern tomorrow. And here is Gordon. First pitch of the game, and you tell the approach for the Jamie hitters get on her early and often, but you didn't expect that early first pitch. Gordon had a plan, sit in and crush it. Lions it to short. Grace Lions is there, two down. Well, and it's interesting since she hit that home run off the curveball, G has been all up with the rise ball. So immediate change mm -hmm. on the pitch calling. Because we've really seen Morris throw a lot of pitches, the curve and the backdoor curve. That last one, though, to Gordon was her off speed, but came to the same location. Kate Gordon was way out in front of it. Of course, Gordon was the one who had the game-winning HR in the eighth inning on Thursday to beat the Sooners. She and Sarah Jubis have provided all the punch. And it's back-to-back, -back, one, two, three innings for Juarez. Here come the big boppers, top of the order, new up, OU. Oklahoma City at the 2021 Women's College World Series. First 2-0 start ever by an unseeded team for James Madison. We had the perfect game from Montana Fouts on her 21st birthday Friday night. The Knowles just keep coming back for more. They've won three straight elimination games. And the Oklahoma Sooners knocked out the defending champions UCLA over the weekend. And we are down to the final four teams. Winners today. We'll play for the championship starting tomorrow night. Woo! Jana Johns and then the top of the order. My guess would be probably Montana Fouts and Kat Sandercock in our uh, yeah. second game today. That's probably that's, that's what I'm guessing the way as it well. Would go. Yeah. That's what I would do if the I two was a coach. Yeah. Johns has a hit and a run batted in against Odyssey Alexander in the previous two games here at the World Series. And then Jennings and Aller to follow. Oof. I mean, that's what we talk about with how dangerous this lineup is from top to bottom. Your number nine hitter has 11 home runs. One of six Sooners, double digit dingers. Yeah, they're, they're on pace to have the best batting average, slugging. Run scored, they're at about 11 per game. Very close to that uh, home run record as well. Yep. Yeah. Ball. Holds. But here's the thing, that young lady right there has uh, given them more trouble than any pitcher they've faced this season. 
is their third time facing her in five dates. That one ripped foul. Trying to get her timing down. Much respect for that changeup that she throws in there about 54 miles an hour. Those are the numbers facing Odyssey Alexander and all the other teams. And that's the pitch. That changeup, she needs to be able to throw that first strike. And when she does, creates just enough hesitation on the rise ball. of this at bat looking to get a base runner on board for Jennings and Allo and Hanson. And draws the walk out of the nine hole in the lineup. And here comes Tiari. Tiari Jennings, the national freshman of the year. Can't tell at all by the way that she hits clutch. This leadoff position set a new single season record for RBIs. Four freshmen, the 92. Watching her at bats too. I mean, a great eye, a great presence. 481 batting average with 27 home runs. A walk each inning here for the suitors. Still hitless against Odyssey as the top of the order comes around again. Jennings will pop to short her first time up. On the key to those three walks so far, the first two came with two outs. This one, the lead off of the inning. And in the ninth spot. Ouch. Now San Pedro, California. Top recruit in the country coming out of California. They got the number one from there and from Texas in this big freshman class. And it also features Jada Coleman and the uh, freshman pitcher, Nicole May. Half of her hits are extras. Drift out of play. So we talked about one of the great uh, freshman seasons of all time. Uh, Chamberlain Allo also had pretty good ones. As you look out the uh, average, Tiare's is the best, uh, just shy of the other two in home runs, and more runs batted in. That's 92 ribbies in 56 games, by the way. Wow. Gaudy numbers. And Odyssey wow. strikes her out, one down. And the hardest throwing pitch we've seen now from Odyssey Alexander, 71 miles an hour. It's a rise ball that runs in to the hands of Jennings. We talked about everything middle away. Jennings will crush and this one. The pop, the velocity, the combination, a perfectly executed pitch against one of the best hitters in the country. Allo. Miss hit one and almost sent it out into the right field bleachers going the opposite way, her first A-B. Jocelyn Allo such a unique stance. Look at how she's open and stays open with her swing. So everything going to the left side of the field as far as momentum, but her backside takes her to the right side of the field. Power, because she understands, she recognizes, yes, it's very unique. She opens up, clears her hips, and then drives that backside. You don't see a lot of hitters, guys, that stay open. You'll see an open stance, but when you stay open, we call it stepping in the bucket, remember? Right. We were stepping out, but for her, she still stays so powerful with that backside, and she's got all the room in the world. 
to drive it. Yeah, and still has that plate coverage, right? That's the big thing. Usually you step in the bucket, you can't hit the outside pitch. Not the case for Allo. <laughs> Fights one off inside there. Patty Gasso, after that outstanding freshman season, the numbers dipped a little bit. Here's her, uh, her family, looks like uh, her dad Levi there. But uh, her growth and her maturity as a softball player and a big bounce back last year and obviously into this season. Of course, even when she struggled a little bit, her numbers were better than just about everybody else. So she is en route to putting together one of the great careers of all time. Wants to add a ring to it. Center, Sullivan again, deep ball back to the track and it stays in house. Two down. That's a smile. <laughs> best hitter in the country against one of the best pitchers in the country. I'd be smiling too. <laughs> well, off the bat too, I think everyone kind of held their breath. Just missed it. 220 to center, she hit that about 218. The first one was 200 down the line. She hit that about a buck 99. So two warning tracks out. And it stays one nothing. And here's Hanson. High fly ball, left field. In foul territory is Gordon. Three base runners for the Sooners so far, but they cannot get anybody over to second. And it is one nothing JMU. Lauren Laporte with Holly Rowe on the other side. Welcome back to the Women's College World Series presented by Capital One here with JMU coach Lauren Laporte. And coach, it has been a really tough outing for Odyssey Alexander over the course of this World Series, throwing so many pitches. How do you see her staying so fresh and composed in the circle? She just went through the top of the lineup like that. <laughs> you know, she's a fifth year senior. Her, her mentality is absolutely amazing. And she's doing such a great job. We'll get back to the hotel resting and we're taking care of her body. It seems like you're going very aggressive today. The very first pitch of the game is yard. What is the mentality and how did Kate Gordon execute that? Yeah, I mean, our, our philosophy was to attack. I think we needed to do a little bit better job at hitting strikes and not swinging at the ball. So hopefully we can be a little bit more disciplined going into the fourth. How are you not letting this big moment get to your kids? Just staying grounded, staying humble. That's the most important thing. And, and just believe it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. On G. Juarez. After giving up that solo home run leadoff pitch, it's a curveball. Look at the contact point coming in, trying to get under the hand. She doesn't. Gordon goes yard. But since then, it's been all rise balls. Look at the way she moves this pitch through the top of the zone. Nine swing and misses so far through these first three innings. It's that rise ball with outstanding backward spin, well located on the corners, in the eyes at JMU, and they have not yet been disciplined enough to stay off of that rise ball. Back to work for G against Odyssey Alexander. 3-4 and 5 in the lineup. Couple of hits, 5K, no free passes. The home run for Gordon and the single for Logan Newton, who is on deck. Another swing and miss high. It's a great pitch for aggressive hitters. If you're looking to swing early, that pitch looks so juicy, so good, especially when it's over the middle part of the plate. And it just keeps on climbing. Smile. She said, I know this game. <laughs> I played on the other end. <laughs> 
is so hard. <laughs> now she's smiling. I couldn't get her to chase that one. That wasn't competitive enough. That's what's so fun about yeah. pitchers who hit. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to get in the mind, play that game back and forth. She got on top of that rise ball. But that can almost be bad for you, too. Yes. Everyone hit and swings at rise ball. <laughs> When you get on top of one, you're like, oh, I got this. Like, bring me another one. Go higher. I'll get it. Take me up the ladder. I'll just keep, I'll keep climbing it. <laughs> that was that was that off-speed rise, guys. That was only 56 miles an hour. Oh. Good eye. That is such a tough pitch to take. We have seen five pitches, all rise balls. And you're right, Beth. She, she can mix those speeds with it and spin it. From 56 up to 62 for the last one. Full count. Jamber. She's trying to wait as long as possible to see. Is this one the strike? Is this one the ball? was not happy with that one. Hey, Monday Night Baseball is the first of a three-game set. Got the NL leading Chicago Cubs and the San Diego Padres. Monday Night Baseball tonight at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN. And Juarez found a pitch she did like. Strikeout number six, one down. And that's like a backdoor curveball with some up to it. She's going to start it out of the zone and bring it back in. And Odyssey Alexander is going to whiff through this. So it's starting away and it pulls back in and ah, still got a little bit of a smile. She's like, ah, I just missed that. That was a great quality at bat though for Alexander. I love seeing pitchers shake off. I love it. So many of the pitches getting called now from the dugout. You see kind of a robotic nature at times of, okay, get this pitch, now I throw it. But when you see them shake off, you know they want Ooh. something. They want to own something. And that was an at-bat that G. Juarez wanted against Odyssey Alexander. And guys, for the first time, I think, since she has fought all the way back from the injury, the bicep injury that kept her sidelined for a good couple of years. Ball. G. Juarez is a little feisty at this World Series, isn't she? You gotta be feisty in that yes. circle. You gotta want the ball. Yeah. Be committed to your pitches. And the fact that she is shaking off, like you mentioned, Jess, means she's thinking. She's thinking about how she wants to attack hitters, what she's comfortable with, what's working. Much bigger presence in the circle. She's had a stare down or two. She's shown good command. And as you guys know, on this stage, you got to own it. Great batter that's gone to a full count. I think that's important. First three innings, G. War has only had to throw 30 pitches. Grounded to Jennings, over to Kinsey Hansen, who's manning first base today. Talon Snow is not in the lineup. Holly? That's right. You see Kinsey Hansen, who's primarily been the catcher in this World Series for Oklahoma, playing first base today with Lindsey Elam behind the bag. 
And it's because Taylor Snow, remember when she slid into third base against UCLA, she dislocated her finger. And she did come back in, play in that game, even get an at-bat. But that finger is not doing well. Patty Gasso telling me before the game, she took herself out of the lineup today. They tried taping those fingers together, but it wasn't working. And I really credit the young woman knowing we have so many talented players on this team. If I'm not at full strength, someone else can take my place. So there's uh, Ken Kinsey Hansen at first base. Display just tremendous toughness to re-enter that game and continue playing. And She was throwing the ball with two mm. fingers when she stayed in that game. And granted, she was at first, so she was throwing it back to the pitcher, but we showed her just two fingers trying to get the ball over there. Oh, Wanda Niokas. It speaks to the Oklahoma Duck, too. You know, Gasso's got some... People she can bring off that bench that are double-digit home run hitters and former All-Americans and... Averages over 400. Yeah, averages <laughs> over 400. I think they got six of them in the lineup today, batting 400 or better. 0-2. Oh, well, yeah, because it wasn't, it's not so much Kinsey Hansen who would have gotten the start no matter what. It would yeah. have been behind the plate. It's Lindsey Elam. That's the switch. So Elam behind the plate with her 12 home runs and 358 batting average, gets into this lineup. And with all these moving parts, they were still the best fielding team in the country during the regular season. Although, interestingly enough, here at the World Series, five errors in their build up to the semis. Always pride themselves on their D. Patty Gasso and Jen Rocher, her son JT Gasso, the coaching staff. Another rise ball and a little point at her catcher from G. Juarez. Still 1 0 Dukes to the bottom of the fourth. Juarez continuing to spin a jam with that rise ball. Odyssey Alexander facing this Oklahoma lineup third time through, mixing speed, 70 miles an hour, up in the zone with her rise ball. Then she'll take it down into the 60, 61 miles an hour. Again, just missing barrels, and then she'll even hit in the 50s. Anywhere from 54 to 57 miles an hour. It's not the swing and miss this time through, third game against this Oklahoma offense. It's about missing the barrel off the end of the bat. Getting it on the hands, you see Oklahoma's offense this season. 419 dropped down to 197 against Odyssey. The run per, runs per game, and it's because of her mix, missing those barrels and mixing those speeds. Nicole Mendez drives that one over the gap in the right center, and their first hit of the day will be extras as Mendez slides in with a triple. Nicole Mendez, with all the experience of having been here before, takes the off speed and mashes it into the right center gap all the way to the wall. And watch her run immediately out of the box. The play's in front of her, and she knows. Could she hang in for a double? Uh-uh. She says, no, I'm going all the way to third. Second triple in two days off of Alexander for Mendez. And the tying run is at third. The go-ahead is Grace Lyons, and the jolt of adrenaline for the partisan crowd here in Oklahoma City. So moving Mendez into that four spot. She had been in the nine spot earlier in this tournament. 
Love all it. the feels. Yeah, loving the way she's swinging the bat. Says, hey, we got to move her up. She needs more ABs. And that was on an off-speed pitch. It was 59 miles an hour coming in. Oklahoma starting to understand the different speeds that Odyssey has. Sitting on one of them. Sitting, exactly. Ball. The senior from Houston, Mendez, who's going to be playing with Mexico, by the way, in the Olympics this summer, is playing in her 22nd World Series game of her career. With as much experience as anybody on this stage. Lions and drops foul. 52 RBI for Grace this year. One of four Sooners that have driven in 50 plus. No outs, you can see the way the defense on the left side is gonna be up, right side is back. Looking on the ground, looking to make a play at home if possible. He went for the outside corner there, and Mendez swipes it out. Or excuse me, Lions. Odyssey has given her everything. Off speed down in the zone, rise ball up, curve away, trying to get in on the hands. Well, just to your point, in game one, 17 swing and misses off of Alexandra, nine Ks. Just one strikeout so far. Two strikeouts today. Uh, two swing and miss, excuse me, and the one strikeout. You're getting there. I was close. <laughs> it's a lot less. It's a lot of juggling. Non <laughs> juggling. Nonverbal <laughs> communication going on in the booth. <laughs> a lot of foul balls. You know, we talked about nearly 250 pitches that the Sooner batters had seen from Alexander. That was before the day even started. The pinch count inching uh, closer to 50 now. Five straight foul balls off the bat of Lions. And the strikeout. One down. Well, that's the swing and miss that she needed with that runner at third base. This is an over-the-top drop at 62 miles an hour, and it just falls off the table. She hides it very well behind that right leg, and <laughs> look at the excitement. Honestly, she's shaking. She's like, yeah. And here comes the crowd favorite, Mackenzie Donahue. Six for ten in this World Series with three home runs. Bob. All three coming on their uh, Saturday sweep of Georgia and UCLA to work their way into the semis. Oh. And they got the win yesterday over James Madison, 6-3, to three, to force this, if necessary, game on Monday afternoon. Still to come, Alabama and Florida State. It's the third time in history We've got to play both if necessary games. The first time since 2003. And it's 3 0 to Donahue. I don't think, you know, if she walks her, I don't think that's a, actually a, a bad thing. Donahue's the hottest hitter in this lineup in the World Series. In the World Series, the next three hitters under 200 in the World Series. Burnett, Mendez 
comes in to score, and I think JMU's going to argue that, that that ball hit off the bat. No. No, it, it went out of play, but the runner still scores. Yep. Yeah. Get it right in front, wild pitch, up onto the screen, and Mendez ties it. It's that off-speed drop, and it just falls in at about 41 feet, gets away from Burnett. Fourth walk puts Donahue at first, and Elam, who walked in the second inning. One for nine so far here in Oklahoma City. Donahue going. Hit and run, foul ball. to Niokas over to first to uh, get the lead runner. Elam is safe. Two down. Ball hit hard right at Jubas. They're going to try to turn the 6-4-3 double play. Gets it over to Niokas. Throw over and very close to front at first base. Good call. Good call, though. Jada Coleman trying to drop down the bunt. Terrific speed, looking for her first hit of this World Series. We saw a run by uh, Sid Romero down there in the first base box. Holly? Well, I wanted to give a special shout out to her father, Mike Romero. Unfortunately, his cancer that he had battled successfully has returned, and he's spending his birthday today going through a, a rigorous chemotherapy session. So, Mike, we just wanted to know we love you. You've been an amazing softball girl dad, and uh, our spirits and hopes are with you today. Keep up your spirits. Coleman sends it the other way. Two on with two outs. Coleman, after showing short game earlier in this at bat, just does a nice job of driving this ball hard to the right of Jubis. Tries to up, jump. Got a glove. That's her first hit off of Odyssey. Had been 0 for 9 prior. Janet Johns is the nine hitter. Johns out to left, and that will drop. And the Sooners will take the lead. RBI, Janet Johns scores Elam. The Sooners get it done at the bottom of the order. They've been struggling in this Women's College World Series, and they say, oh, no, we've 
got the bats as well. John is going to dump this right in front of Gordon. Little Bobo. And this team also runs very well. Lindsey Elin scoring from second base. Coleman advances to third, and Johns on the throw comes into second. You see him picking up the dirt. That's from the Gladiator. They're in the arena. And they are indeed entertaining the Sooner fans here at Hall of Fame Stadium with a couple in scoring position with two outs. Mendez the triple and then came in to score on a wild pitch. And now back-to-back -back singles, Coleman and Jana Johns. And the dangerous T.R.A. Jennings in the top of the order around again. Allie Rowe, by the way, will be chatting with Patty Gasso. After the inning. Jennings is 0 for 2. Alexander Ooh. struck her out the last time up. He's also moved off the plate. Last two at bats, struck out, popped up on the pitches on the inner half of the zone. It's exactly what Odyssey attacked her with for strike one in this at bat. Jennings hit a home run off of her yesterday. This is a turn of events for the Sooners. Uh, the top of the order very quiet. And it's been the bottom bringing the juice. This is the 25th pitch of this inning, and she gets Jennings again. Swinging at the rise, they leave a couple on, but they do get a couple in, and a 2-1 Sooner lead for a spot in the finals. Welcome back to the Women's College World Series presented by Capital One here with Oklahoma Sooner coach Patty Gasso. And coach, you guys have seen Odyssey Alexander so much now, but your hitting coach JT Gasso told me in-game adjustments would be key. What have they adjusted to because it's starting to work? Um, just being maybe a little more aggressive as she's working us in and out. I think we're eliminating a pitch that is helping us a bit, but um, it's just a matter of time, and that's that's most important. I think we had some really good at bats, although Grace Lyon struck out. She made her throw a lot of pitches. She's thrown every pitch this, uh, in this tournament, so that's our goal. Coach, um, the very first pitch of the game, your pitcher, G. Juarez, gives up a home run. Yeah. How do you like the way she has regained her composure yeah. and not let that affect her? She's been tremendous. The top of uh, GMU's lineup is incredible, so we have to be really smart with what we're doing. I know you had a special message I for do. your mom. I do. It's my mother's birthday, Janet Fralick in SoCal. She's 83 years old today. Love you, Mom. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Holly. How about a G. Juarez package? Oh, G. Juarez's rise ball is exploding at the top of the zone. She'll chase you far out, but look at the way she can command it at the top in the zone. And with that tight spin, that rotation, the movement, it's horizontal and vertical. So moving it on two different planes, Juarez with seven Ooh. strikeouts, getting it down. And for the first time today, she has the lead. And after the two run, bottom of the fourth, she's retired 12 of the last 13. The home run and the single back in the first. Ball. Six, seven, and eight coming up. banner so well for the non-power five schools, the mid-majors, the underdogs. Meeks is probably the one that brings the moxie. Ball out. Has overcome a lot over the course of her career. Loves to dig right in there. This is such a gritty bunch. That love playing behind Alexander. There's the 2 2 pitch. A 
has a couple of hits here at the series. And Meeks just started 13 games her first three years. Really had to earn a position her senior year. And coach talks about how not only she earned it, then she just exploded once she got that starting third baseman job. She knows what it was like to ride the bench, see from that different perspective. And she's helped this team so much. Just a great example of our sport. There's a spot for everybody. Yep. Kelly Montalvo is actually one of the people she saw on this yep. stage on television playing for the University of Alabama. Same height, four foot 11. Influenced her a ton. This is exactly your point. It's what I love about softball. You got the six, five, and the four 11s. <laughs> Woo! Called strike three. That is the eighth strikeout for Juarez. One down. This is that backdoor curveball. So she'll start it off the zone and ride it back in. Just a lot of great movement. Very consistent. And lots of command to be able to paint that outside part of the plate. for one today, struck out on the rise ball in the second. Looking for her first hit of the World Series. Up, up. She wore as one of the things that she had to adjust and change as she was you know, going through injuries, trying to redefine herself, reinvent herself, was be better against right-handed batters. In fact, she has switched those numbers. She's better against right-handed batters and she's been against lefties. Why? She's able to get inside on them. She talked to us about when we had them in Super Regionals a week ago about how she hit a batter when she was younger. And she's like, it traumatized me. <laughs> she hit a right hand a batter, hurt her pretty bad. You look at her numbers over the years, Arizona State to now. And she was so afraid to go back inside because of that. And that was something she really had to work on. It's a difference maker for her. We see 48 strikeouts over the course of two years, one at Arizona State, and then this year, numbers for her. But a big part of that is right-handed batters and overcoming that fear. One, two to Hall. And just to your point, I'm looking at 643charts.com. Lefties against G. Juarez hit just a, a buck 80, and uh, excuse me, righties hit just a buck 80. Hit, lefties actually hit higher, which yeah. is an anomaly for that lefty lefty matchup. Yeah. This is the first year it's been like that. Yeah. And it's another strikeout, number nine, 208. We'll check out this week's sports lineup. Getting ready for the Euros, NBA Conference semifinals, and UFC Friday on ESPN, and then all day Saturday for you. Great action. You can also watch them all on your ESPN app. Lauren Burnett checks it right back to G, and another one, two, three inning. 2-1 Sooners moving to the bottom of the fifth. She was not in the circle yesterday. They lost to Florida State, forcing the if necessary game. And here come the Tide and the Seminoles for their rematch. Our second semifinal coming up next. Our two winners today are into the championship series tomorrow night. Game one, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Jocelyn Allo to lead things off, two, three, four. Then a 2-1 Oklahoma lead, seeking a uh, spot in the finals and a shot at a fifth national championship. It's 
It's our 16th year with a champ series. The number one seed has made it seven times. They've won the title just five times. Has not been easy for the top dogs over the years. I wonder why that is. What do you think? Pressure? Might be uh, part of the equation, I would think. Expectations? Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely part of it. I think there's also just that number one isn't number one anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, before there was such a difference between the top teams, uh, like top one, two, three. It was a clear dominance. Yep. And now it's like, yeah, you can have number one all season long. It don't matter until you get to postseason because everybody can beat you. I mean, JMU proved that. Yeah. Well um, seeded, they won. Exactly. And Patty Gasso mentioned she's like, oh. she thought they were a third seed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not really, but, you know, she did say it. <laughs> <laughs> She, she smarts a little bit. I think she heard me. They won it as the 10 seed in 2017 over the 1 seed. So I can tell you the difference of that one was Shea Knighton uh, in yeah. 17 innings. Oh. And a couple of page turners in the circle. Mm -hmm. Parker and Lowry. Last year, Oklahoma lost as the 1 seed to the 2 seed UCLA. Of course, 2019. Yeah. No, no tournament last year. Sooners also won it as the one seed in 2013. That was the uh, Lauren Chamberlain days against Tennessee. She's won it every year with the lefty in the circle. She's got G. Juarez back in shape. Mm-hmm. With a couple of uh, righties. Very first year of the tournament, Michigan won it as a one seed. Or uh, of the champ series, excuse me. Mike Candrea's last title, 2007, the Taron Mowat finals. Another fly ball, playable in foul territory, and it's caught by Jubis down to Holly Rope. Well, honestly, Alexander is quite an athlete. You see her here pitching and hitting, but she's also played shortstop for the Dukes. She was a great athlete in high school. I want to thank her principal, Miss Sturdefan, for getting us pictures of her on the volleyball team, on the basketball team at Parkview High School in Virginia, where she was all conference in both of those sports. Mickey Deans, the former JMU coach, went to watch the state championship in high school with his eye on another pitcher, and he said, I couldn't take my eyes off of Odyssey. He offered her, and she came to JMU, and he said she's very unorthodox. She had a rise, she had a change, but it moved differently. Base hit, Kinsey Hansen with a one out. Uh, he said that he wanted her to really learn and grow from the other pitchers they had there, at Jalen uh, Ford, Megan Good, and he said he threw her into the fire as a freshman. She got starts against Missouri, Auburn. She even got a win, a no-hitter against a ranked USF team. So Odyssey Alexander has gone from unproven to really thrown into the fire, and she has excelled. A remarkable run into the national semifinals. As an unseeded team with four upsets of ranked teams. One run down to the one seed, trying to become the first mid-major to the finals in 27 years. Mendez launches one out to left and back on the track. Gordon battled with that for a little bit. Two down. This ball just kept carrying. You see Gordon plant herself and then start to backpedal. <clears throat> That's the most dangerous thing as an outfielder because you lose the ball. As soon as it gets over your head like this, you see Kate loses it for a second, still able to hold on to it. Grace Lyons, a ground out in the second. Struck out in the fourth and a long at bat. She and Odyssey went round and round. Oh. An 
I think that's the pitch they've eliminated. Patty Gasso was talking about splitting the strike zone so they're not waving as much as that rise ball that is elevated, looking for that off speed lower in the zone. That was the pitch they were swinging and missing on early in this game. Small adjustments, looking down in the zone. That one was low, went for it, pulled it foul. Well, that's what good hitters do, especially against pitchers that can throw multiple pitches through the zone. You, in order to increase your odds, you have to figure out which one do I not hit well, which one do I get rid of so that I can look for something else. to get it back in. Hansen will hold it second. Two on with two outs. Second hit of the inning. This is an off-speed pitch down in the zone where they're looking. Perfectly placed down the line. Kate Gordon's been busy out there in left field. These Sooner hitters coming around on Odyssey Alexander. A lot of hard hit balls to the left side of the field. Chance for Donahue. Ball down. A pop out and a walk. Now Donahue, from what we've seen, the three home runs yesterday, her power is actually up in the zone. Yes. That's what she's <laughs> crushed out. She doesn't like a lot of pitches down there. So for her, the approach might be a little bit different. And the first pitch was a fastball low in the zone. She likes that. Yeah. <laughs> up. And the location every other hitter's laying off of this rise ball elevated, but that is Donahue's cookie zone. At least it was on Saturday when she hit three home runs, all of them on this pitch. Already in the World Series, the Sooners 10 2 out RBI. With Hansen here out at second. Donahue doesn't fish, two and one. So as a pitcher, this is where you have to start to adjust when you see that hitters are not taking good pitches through the zone or not even attempting at them. You have to make adjustments. When you throw a good strike in a spot where they've been looking before and they don't swing at it, you know, okay, they're looking for something different. So it alerts you, all right, I have to be very careful with my off-speed pitch yeah. low in the zone. It's that cat and mouse game that... They adjust, you adjust. Singles for Hanson and Lions. Remember Patty Gasso telling Holly Rowe part of the goal is also just to work these at bats, knowing Odyssey Alexander has thrown every pitch for her team, the longer that they can get her even in and at bat, it's a win. Pitch counts up to 86. And Donahue will make her work some more. Odyssey's proven she can work. It just helps the hitter the more that you can see. The more pitches that you can see, Different velocities, spin, allows you to continue to make contact, foul them off until you get yours. Increase the odds that the mistake shows yeah. up. Pitch count for the series up to 428 from Alexander. To finish up on Patty and Holly's conversation. Dukes will dance with the one that brought him. Another full count. Sixth of the game.
safe. who just kept battling to get her pitch and this is it up in the zone she loves to crush she's five foot three when she gets letters she hammers it home she gets not one but two runs to come in to score now Oklahoma's up three to one four to one two runs in the fourth two more here in the fifth And that hit Lindsay Elam, who's on base for the third time today. And now Laporte will come out and get her infield together with her pitcher. will walk back to the dugout by herself. Alexander will stay, and you can see her fighting through the pain of that foot issue. Her teammates huddling around her. Odyssey remains. Two on with two outs for Jada Coleman. picks up her second consecutive hit off of Odyssey Alexander, a pitch on the outside corner, and she just takes it into that gap, and the two out Sooners are gonna be running around the bases, and the throw goes back in the second, missing the cut, so no opportunity to get Elam scoring all the way from first. Hitless through the first three innings, and the Boomer Bats are alive for the Sooners. Another hit batter. And you can see the emotion right now for Odyssey Alexander. A brilliant run into the national semifinals. A spectacular career at James Madison has captured the hearts of softball fans nationwide. A pair of two-run doubles, Mackenzie Donahue and Jada Coleman to bust it open in a four-run fifth inning. Dukes will hustle Alexis Bermudez out to the bullpen, and they uh, will not wait for that. A pitching change and a standing ovation for Odyssey Alexander.
The pitching change with Oklahoma on top, 6-1. Back to the World Series in a moment. Odyssey Alexander, the uh, numbers over a thousand pitches in the NCAA tournament. Through the tears, some hugs. Amazing memories she has made along the way and bringing a lot more fans into the softball family. It's an amazing postseason performance. All regular season, but the postseason when so many eyes were on her. And just a great example for Alyssa Humphrey, who's going to be mid-60s, spins the ball a lot, has good command. You think back to the great pitchers that Odyssey Alexander looked up to, Megan Good just had that leadership. That's exactly what Odyssey Alexander has been for Humphrey and, and the younger pitchers on the staff. The next one will look up to Odyssey. Terrific snap and the step on the base for Meeks to get the third out. Four runs in and a 6-1 Oklahoma lead. The winner is on to the champ series. Patty Gasso told us that when things get going, it gets hot real fast. And they have turned on the heater in Oklahoma City. The NCAA Women's College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And we welcome you back to the Women's College World Series. And a beautiful aerial shot of the newly renovated Hall of Fame Stadium with the upper deck. Capacity close to 13,000. Watching some history today for the very first time. Both semifinals went to the if necessary game and due to some bad weather over the weekend, both pushed to a Monday instead of a Sunday. And that means our championship series game one will be tomorrow night at seven Eastern on ESPN. The winner of this one will face the winner of our second matchup this evening, Alabama and Florida State. After they grabbed the one nothing lead in the first inning, JMU has uh, been stymied by G. Juarez in the circle. He's retired 13 in a row and 15 of the last 16 since the Kate Gordon leadoff home run. She's got nine strikeouts. So what that looks like on your scorecard is second, third, fourth, and fifth all retired in order. That means a lot of zeros. <laughs> And a lot of K's mm -hmm. with an R next to it for Rise Ball. <laughs> After uh, Gordon sent her curveball out the yard. <laughs> Sullivan and then the top of the order. Work to do for JMU. Scored four against Oklahoma on Friday, a 2-1 win, uh, or on Thursday, a 2-1 win over Oklahoma State on Friday, and the play of the year from Odyssey Alexander, that defensive gem jumping out of the circle. And then they scored three yesterday, so they would need their best offensive output here in the last couple of innings to extend their season. Well, JMU would have to do what Oklahoma did to Odyssey Alexander and again split the plate, lay off that rise ball high in the zone, look for something off speed low. It's a good take.
popped her up. And it's Johns that will direct traffic. One down. Kate Gordon had the home run ball on the very first offering of the day, and look what's happened since. The last 71 pitches from G, nine strikeouts and a single base runner. Johns keeps it in front of her and will be able to make the play the first. Uh, Kate Gordon reaches. And Sarah Jubas right behind her does have some home run power. She's been the home run hitter, even though Kate Gordon Caught up with her with two home runs. Sarah Jubas also two huge home runs for this JMU offense here at the World Series. Get a three run home run yesterday. Sorry, just off of the Sooners in the loss. Woo! Back door is in for a strike. Jubas also doesn't strike out very often, only five on the season. Rarely see single digit numbers when it comes to strikeouts. Gave Gordon an infield hit on that last shot, so the third hit of the day for the Dukes. They have four outs to work with. State. Seminoles beat the Tide yesterday 2-0. Snapped Alabama's 20-game win streak. They were smoking hot coming in. They did not throw Montana Fouts. Probably will see her today. And probably Katherine Sandercock for the Knowles, their two aces. Interesting contrast, uh, you know, Odyssey Ale uh, Alexander, obviously the ace for JMU, but it's been much more staff oriented for Patty Gasso and the Sooners. If the score holds, they would have plenty of options for game one, two, and three in the champ series. Oh. Well, that makes them hard to prepare for. Got the left side, we got the freshman from the right side. Sale as well from the right side with a little more velocity. And you know you'll see all three within the series. Yeah. Laura is working on her third gem of this tournament. Nice change there. Ten strikeouts, two down. This is where she can mix speeds with that pitch up in the zone. This is almost an off-speed rise ball. So look at the way that Jubas is going to be well out in front. Just the sixth strikeout for Jubas on the year. Three here in the World Series. I saw the motion of Odyssey Alexander when she was taken out of this game in the dugout tears. Got to turn it right around. She still gets to stay in this game, help her team out in the batter's box. Popped up right side. Hansen called off by Jennings. Side retired. Three outs away for the Sooners with a 6-1 lead.
Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. G. Juarez doing her thing, and Oklahoma six runs in the last two innings. The bats have come alive, and now will they do so for the top of the order? Surprisingly quiet for them. The rest of the batting order has produced for the Sooners. Here's Jocelyn Allo. She and Jennings are 0 for 5. And look at that, they uh, never have both been hitless in a game this season. See the back knee of Jocelyn Allo go down. You rarely see that happen. That is a beautiful off-speed pitch. Anytime a hitter falls down for it, trying to get to it. Ball. I like it. Back to back. Yeah, come back with it. I was like, I fell down last time. I'm going to go ahead and take this one. <laughs> Alyssa Humphrey, the relief pitcher on for Odyssey Alexander. After Odyssey left the game in the fifth, it was a two-run double from Mackenzie Donahue, a two-run double from Jada Coleman. when you've hit 32 of them. <laughs> it's pretty much business as usual. Watch the reacts here. Jocelyn Allo gets a pitch up in the zone, crushes it. She knows. She's going to go into my jog mode because I've done this so many times in the course of my career. In fact, I think we might be looking before she's done with her career as the new career home run record holder. 32 this year. She's still got another year to play. That's her 86 is Odyssey Alexander. Even her eyebrows go up. 86 career, 32 on the season for Allo. Single season record is 37 from Laura Espinoza back in 1995. Camilla Carrera and Alexi Elkins also high on that single season list. And then you've got the greatest list your career home run record holder right now lauren chamberlain at 95 and jocelyn allo again with a whole nother year left at 86 nine shy the biggest record in the sport team number is now at 155 three shy of the single season mark hansen right back up the middle so since this is the bottom of the sixth inning, and the run rule is in play here now, with a base runner at first, if they can get an eight-run lead, they could end it early. 35 run rule wins in their 56 games this year. It's wow. been an extraordinary season. Right, and at one point in the season, we wondered if that was going to be a detriment to them. Not enough innings, not enough innings for their pitchers. When you get to this point, and you're, nope, nope, that's a bonus. That's good. Snow, Walk them off early. Snow is on to run. <laughs> and Nicole Mendez is the batter. Tripled and scored in the fourth. That oven mitt on, those dislocated fingers. We saw Holly, Repo Holly Rowe reported. On her Mendez, beautiful bunt. <laughs> Winning run is aboard.
Casso will go back to the bench here and call up a pinch hitter, Riley Boone. Again, as we mentioned before, nice when you can uh, pull a 400 hitter out of your dugout. Normally, you would just hope for one of those in your lineup, <laughs> yeah, not one coming off the bench. It's a plethora of riches for Patty Gasso. Riley is another one of the Oklahoma natives that have fared so well. Dreaming of growing up and putting that uniform on Woo! and playing in this arena. He has a couple of bunt singles already here at the World Series. And a grand slam earlier in the NCAA tournament. Good versatility. Did that against Wichita State. I mean, the explosive offense 29 times, double digit runs scored, including one here already. They scored 24 against Wichita State in a single game in the regionals had a 33-run game during the regular season. Infield pop, Jubas, one down. And the dues from the crowd As Mackenzie Donahue steps in. Woo! Still to come, Alabama and Florida State in our other semifinal. Winners into the championship series. up in the second, walked in the fourth, and then McKenzie with a two-run double in the fifth. by Judas gets the lead runner at third, two down. There's Lindsay Elam. A walk, a fielder's choice, and a hit by pitch. If JMU works out of this, middle of their order would be due up, and their last chance in the seventh. Nicole Mendez has been out there dancing. Never been a huge fan of that. I'm all about aggressive leads, but once you're out, get back. And she's kind of been out there dancing, baiting. Catch a brunette to throw down as she did.
Now, the one thing we've seen in this game is if Lindsey Elam can get this to a gap, we have seen every runner that's at first base be able to come around and score. The JMU outfielders have had a hard time getting the ball in. So base hits, doubles have usually scored two when there's runners at first and second. Yeah, especially with two outs. Oklahoma, they put their head down on run. There's no holding up, no hesitation, waiting for it to go foul. As soon as they see swing, they're off. Side is retired, but the solo home run from Jocelyn Allo and James Madison down to their final swings. Seven to one, Oklahoma, as we move to the top of the seventh, three outs away from a spot in the champ series. Terrific work today from G. Juarez, the Capital One player of the game, has retired 18 of the last 20 with 10 strikeouts. And now looking to put the finishing touches on James Madison for a shot at the national championship. Four, five, and six do up. Logan Newton singled in the first. Juarez has given up just one hit since. First unseeded team to get here in nine years, and they, they made a count, they made a run. Farther than any other unseeded team had ever gotten. Up, up. One of just three teams to beat the Sooners. Whew. But as Oklahoma has proven, it's a, a whole different ball game when it turns into a three-game series, as this one has. They faced off yesterday and again today in the semis. Jennings going down. Oklahoma scouts so well, they make adjustments game to game, pitch to pitch. <laughs> Madison Iokas. Oh, the home run swings of Kate Gordon, the fifth-year senior from Shenandoah, Virginia. Sarah Jubis, the junior. And, of course, uh, the inspiration of Odyssey Alexander. It's been great to see on social media all the little girls now out in their backyards starting to sling it. Woo! After watching Odyssey perform here in Oklahoma City, I love the simplicity of how she did it, too. I mean, she had one softball, had a glove. She got it, a store that wasn't expensive, and a wall. And as much as we've got all the money and all the, the costs to play the sport, it feels like now you can also have the simplicity. Find your own way in a backyard. You don't even need someone to catch you. You just need some determination, work ethic, and maybe some YouTube videos to help you out as well. Some, some passion. <laughs> yeah, some passion, the love. Get off the couch and go out and Train yourself. It's incredible. All the money that can be spent within the game, all the, the bats you see little girls carrying around now, the private lessons and the training, and the simplicity of the game is just working hard, caring a ton about it. And having some knowledge too. I think that's what's cool about technology now is you don't need to have necessarily a person right there that knows it. You can go online and find it. Go teach yourself. Boy, and a tip of the cap, too, to the, the head coach for the Dukes, Lauren Laporte. You know, when you make a run like this, and uh, 
job openings uh, that uh, may be available around the country. Certainly her name will be coming up. But uh, just fabulous work. Ninth year at James Madison, the uh, assistant coach stepping up to be the head coach the last four seasons. Is another one of the seniors from Chicago. Defensive player in the league this year, and she will uh, make her mark on the record books. Second all time in stolen bases at JMU. Kate Gordon, their career leader in home runs, a two-time All-American. And a base knock for Niokas. I love it, the senior. We'll always remember that last at bat. You get that base hit, something to carry with you. Lindsay Meeks. for the Sooners, Patty Gasso has talked about the growth from uh, the two losses during the regular season and uh, certainly refocused after the loss to JMU on Thursday in the opener. They have come roaring back. 31 runs in their last four games. Alo's home run, their ninth of the World Series. They've outscored their opponents 34 to 11. I think it's important to note, though, that they do still give up runs. I mean, those 11 runs, love the dominant teams we've seen here offensively, also have maybe that one or two people in the circle that can just shut down an offense. But what I like about Oklahoma is they know that they will give up runs. I mean, shoot, the first pitch of this game was a home run, and they know how to respond. Well, they don't panic because they yes. know they can put runs up on the board. And as a pitcher as well, you know that you make a mistake, your offense is going to be there to pick you up. Oh, there you go. They did not see Florida State or Alabama during the regular season. Oh, by the way, they do have some pretty good pitchers, and Sandra Cock and Fouts, just to name a couple. Kaylin Arnold. Lexi Kilfoyle, we've all seen throwing this week. Sports Center's coming up next, and then we'll be back out here to the ballpark for our second national semifinal with the Knowles and Tide. Both of them former national champions, Florida State, trying to match what they did in 2018, coming out of the loser's bracket to win six games in a row for the championship. And of course, Alabama, the 2012 championship came at the expense of Oklahoma when they went dancing in the rain. to the Dukes fans. She's got 
a lot of that Holly Rose spunk to her, doesn't she? <laughs> oh, yeah. A little pizzazz to her game. <laughs> she has put a lot of smiles on people's faces watching JMU this year. Excuse me, a couple of hits and a walk. The last six batters that Juarez has faced. She tried to lock this thing down quickly. First runner in scoring position of the day. a look at our Women's College World Series bracket. The Champ Series best of three starts uh, tomorrow night on ESPN at 7.30 Eastern. Ms. Juarez is a... Uh, Gets the strike out there, two down. Trying to work through her longest inning of the day. Morris continues to spin her pitches. This is a backdoor curveball that just kind of bleeds through the zone. Picks up the big strikeout. 11th of the day. One out away from the champ series for the Sooners. strike and they will be on their feet Championship. 